In this video, we're going to explore methods of manipulating the appearance and cosmetics of points once they're placed into a drawing. Let's begin by looking at the drawing orientation itself. This drawing is currently or oriented with north straight up. The points were placed in the drawing with that orientation and are perpendicular to the screen. What I would actually like is to have the street line on this project aligned at the bottom of the screen and all points perpendicular to that alignment. Since Carlson does not support using a UCS, a user coordinate system, it supplies another method for changing a drawing orientation, which does not affect the coordinate base or the coordinates themselves. It's a very important aspect of Carlson. A UCS, a user coordinate system, will change its relationship with the coordinate file. Therefore, the method to change a drawing orientation lies under the View menu, and under View, there is a Twist Screen option. The standard option allows just a random twist following your cursor. Line, Polyline, or Text allows you to pick a line, polyline, or an existing piece of text and have the program set the drawing orientation based on that. The Surveyor method allows you to type in a bearing and Restore Due North returns the screen back to north straight up. Let's use line, polyline, or text, and we're going to select this street line. The program then supplies an option to change the orientation from due east 90 degrees from that line. In other words, if you wanted to select that line and then twist it 45 degrees from that line, you could enter that angle at this time. By hitting enter, we accept 90 degrees due east as the orientation for that line. Once we hit enter, the orientation is set. Your crosshairs change perpendicular to the screen. Note the UCS icon. Now the y-axis north is rotated on the screen. It does not, however, affect the coordinates whatsoever. You will notice, though, that the points themselves are still rotated to the previous drawing orientation. To reset the orientation of the points based upon the new drawing orientation, we'll execute the command twist point attributes. This command exists in the ribbon under the twist point attribute icon or under the points menu, twist point attributes. The options are to twist point attributes based upon the current twist screen setting. You also have an option to type in an azimuth, pick an entity in the drawing, such as a line, and have the points orient to that line, or follow. Following a polyline is a great option if you had a long winding roadway and you wanted to orient all the points based upon the center line or alignment of that roadway. We'll select the option, which is the default, twist screen. Next, select all, which is the default to twist all, meaning the symbols and all three attributes. Again, we have an option to twist the attributes relative to the current screen. The example again being if all attributes were to be twisted 45 degrees to the current screen, you would type in 45 degrees. We are going to leave it at zero so it follows perpendicular to our current view. We can select the points by groups, screen, or number. We're going to accept the screen default and window in all the points. When I hit enter, the points now twist perpendicular to the current view. You can edit the content of a point by simply double clicking on any point. A dialog box appears with all the point information, including the name, coordinates, elevation, and a drawing description as well as the coordinate file description. Note that the two do not have to be the same. Your CRD description can be a short code as coded in the data collector, and your drawing description can be something much longer. You also have an option to set a point as a non-surface entity, excluding it from any surface models. You can change a symbol. So if you prefer not to have a circle for your symbol, you can just simply click on the symbol 
and through your symbol library, select any symbol you would prefer. There are also point notes displayed in this dialog box that can be collected in the field using ServeCE or other data collector programs. If you are collecting GIS attributes and using the CRDB format, you would also have a list of GIS attributes carried with the point. You can attach an image to a point. You can either do that in the data collector using ServeCE or ServePC or add it back in the office by simply adding an image file to a point. If you would like to edit multiple attributes at the same time, you can use the command edit multiple point attributes. When executed, you will see the edit multiple points attribute dialog box, which contains options to control which points and how they will be manipulated. As you can see, you have an option to select points through a range, an area, or selection set, which means to manually select them from the screen. We'll put it on range of points and put all, which you can just type in or type in the range of point numbers. Note the option again to pick by point group only. A very useful option is to use description match. In this data set, there are concrete monuments that were located as part of the field survey. The description on those monuments was C-O-N-C -C space M-O-N. By putting in that description match, it will filter all other points that don't match that description. When I hit OK, it will filter out all the points. There are two, you can see at the top of the screen. And what I would like to do is control the description of each and change that description layer. Now this is the attribute itself from point description, which is the default, to MON-TXT. The symbol, I would like to change the layer to monuments and the symbol itself to a solid square box. I would also like to change the point entity itself. The point entity meaning the point block that contains the three attributes. The current attribute block layer and point layer is points, P-N-T-S, which is the same layer as all the rest of the points as that was the default when the points were brought in. I'm going to change these to a layer called points-mon. When my selection is complete, I hit OK. You can now see that I have a concrete monument with a new symbol located on separate layers. By examining this using our layer manager, you can see we have three new layers, monuments text, monuments, and points dash monuments. What this allows us to do is select all the other point layers, freeze them, and what's left for the display is the monument itself and the attribute description. Let's repeat that process for the iron pipes that were also included in this data set. By taking a quick look at the data, you can see there are three iron pipes with the description IP. Again, edit multiple point attributes, change the description match to IP. Again, we're going to change the layer of the description from point description, and since we've already created it, we can hit the set button and select monuments text. The symbol we are going to put on monuments. The symbol itself, it's an iron pipe symbol. The point entity points monument and OK. And similar to the concrete monument, we now have an iron pipe with the same layer scheme as the concrete monuments. Again, using our layer control, let's freeze all the other point layers. Occasionally, it's necessary to rescale the attributes. If we were to change the plot size scale, these attributes may be too small to read. To perform that function, we can use the 
resize point attributes icon or again from the points menu resize point attributes the method for resizing them can either be a scale or typing in an absolute size I am going to scale them three times the size that they currently are I am prompted to decide whether I want the symbols the labels or both I would like both and again my selection set similar to many other commands is by screen number or point group I am going to select screen and window in these points and hit enter the points are now three times the size that they were before there are several options for editing the location of the attributes if you have grips displayed you can actually select an attribute and move it manually there is also an option to move points singularly again under the points menu move point attribute you can select the attribute move it which follows your cursor and then actually have an option to rotate the orientation of it a very useful feature is to move the point attribute and add a leader to it the command move point attribute with leader once executed allows you to select options by hitting O the option menu dialog box appears which allows you to draw a landing leader tick uh, arrowhead with control over to the size of the arrowhead an offset scaler for the arrow tip itself and to reorder the description elevation and point number then you simply select an attribute and a leader is attached to the description in the points menu under point utilities there are a whole host of options that are worth exploring options like masking point attributes freezing and thawing attributes and adding description for points that already exist